Okay, so it's going to seem kind of fast, but if you've met me, which you guys should have, uh, if you're in my class, I'm kind of crazy. So we're just going to get a going. So 9.1, math patterns. Um, basically, what I want you to know from this section about mathematical patterns is how to work with, identify, label the different terminologies in sequences um, and derive both explicit and recursive formulas. So let's just get going. A sequence in the most basic of definitions is uh, an ordered list of numbers. So here's a list of numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. They're in order. And uh, we or it's our job to try to find this pattern. So go ahead and pause. You know, these, this is my little pause button. Go ahead and pause and try to find the pattern. Okay, hopefully you paused and you found the pattern. It looks like it's going up by two. Two, 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 two. Great, All right, that, that's the pattern. It's going up by two each time. Two plus two is four, plus two is six, plus two is eight, plus two is 10. All of these items in this sequence, let's use a different color, purple is good, all of these items are called terms. All of the little items in your ordered list of numbers are called terms, and it's represented by n. So n equals 1 here. There's the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term. And so I can use that to find, I don't know, um, when n equals... Let's just go easy for now. When n equals 6, what would be the next term? Well, you guys told me the pattern's adding 2, so 10 plus 2 would be 12. So that brings me to another important denot er, uh, notation. The amount of the sixth term equals 12. I like um, wording it that way because then you remember what that a means. The amount of the sixth term term is 12 because see here's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here's the sixth term. That amount is 12. So let me ask you, what's the amount of the third term? Question mark. Yeah, hopefully I hear all of you saying 6. The amount of the third term is 6 because here's my 1, 2, third term and that amount is 6. Now, how do I write formulas to express um, a sequence similar to the one we were just given. Well, there are two main types. There are explicit and there are recursive. And explicit are great because they are based off of n itself. So here's an example of an explicit formula, uh, 3n minus 2. The reason explicit formulas are awesome is because all you have to tell me is a desired term. Let's say you want to know the 50th term in this sequence. Now all you have to do if you're given an explicit formula is take the desired term and substitute it in for n. So the amount of the 50th term will equal 3 times 50 minus 2. And 3 times 50 is 150, and 150 minus 2, the amount of the 50th term is 148. That's why explicit formulas are awesome. You need to be able to evaluate explicit formulas just the way I did. So for example, I want you to pause really quick and tell me the amount of the 21st term. Pause and do that please. Okay, hopefully you unpaused and 21 or the 21st term you would just plug 21 in for n. 3 times 21 is 63. 63 minus 2 is 61. So hopefully you are comfortable doing that. Recursive on the other hand little more interesting. The recursive, um, I like to think of it sort of like it's reoccurring. Um, it's based off of initial condition given to you, and that's normally represented by A1. Why does that represent the initial condition? Well, it's because it's the amount of the first term. The first term in your sequence is the initial term, right? And so let's say the initial term in this particular sequence is 133. And they give us a recursive formula that looks like this. A sub n equals a sub n minus 1 minus 3. This part here is what makes it recursive. It cannot be recursive without this a sub n minus 1. Because what that is saying is the amount of whatever term you're desiring is based off of the term just prior to it. And so... For example, I'm going to make this very, very easy, and we're just going to find the amount of the second term. Well, that's going to be the amount of the 2 minus 1 
minus 3. Let's simplify. The amount of the second term equals the amount of the first term, minus 3. Now we can go somewhere. Now it's just simple substitution. The amount of the first term is 133. And so my amount of my second term must be 130. Awesome! And so you need to be able to recognize explicit recursive formulas and know how to evaluate for them. That's a very, very important skill to know. The hard part, uh, or the potentially difficult part, is um, being able to write them. Um, and so that's what we're going to do here. I have another sequence, an ordered list of numbers, 0, 3, 8, 15, 24. Go ahead, pause, see if you can find that pattern. Okay, hopefully you hit play and you found that the pattern is it's going up by consecutive odd integers. That's just fancy talk for plus 3, plus 5, plus 7, plus 9. So I can guess, now that I've recognized this mathematical pattern, that the next term is probably going to be 11 higher than 24. And 24 plus 11 is 35. I'm thinking that 35 is probably the next term in this sequence. It may be, it may be not, but I, I think, I think it is. And I don't know how I, ooh, I can resize it. Okay, so the potentially troubling part. We're going to write an explicit formula and we're going to write um, a recursive formula based off of um, this sequence here. We're going to start with recursive because once you see how um, painful recursive is, maybe it'll make you appreciate being able to synthesize um, the explicit. <sighs> okay, so uh, when I want to find a recursive formula, I just go ahead and write out the list. So my first, second, third, fourth, and fifth term are zero, that's not a zero, there we go, zero, three, eight, 15, 24. That's what I was given. And so um, I want to figure out how I got that based on the term prior to it. So for let's start with this first term here, or the second term. The amount of the second term is 3. And so the term before it is 0. How do I get from 0 to 3? Well, I had to add 3 to it. Okay, and you can see for all of these... Um, what you had to do was take the term before it and add something to it. So we took the term before it and we're adding to it. And so these right here, that's your a sub n minus 1. That's the amount of the term prior to it. The amount of the first term is 0. The amount of the second term, which is 3 minus 1, is 3. The amount of the third term is 8. The amount of the fourth term is 15. So that is our a sub n minus 1. Now we need to figure out, formulaically, if that's even a word, how to get these numbers here. Uh, because we want to make a formula similar to what we had here. See how we had a to the n minus 1 minus 3, or not a to the n, a sub n minus 1 minus 3. We want to do something similar with this equation. And, and this is a, a relatively difficult one. Um, you might not be able to see the pattern, but the more you work with it, the better it'll get. So I'm going to say that a sub n is the previous term plus, let's see, how does the 3 and the 2 relate? Well, I don't want to just say I add 1, because if I add 1 to 3, it doesn't give me 5. So that doesn't work. Um, let's try doubling the 2. If I double the 2, I get 4. If I double the 3, I get 6. If I double the 4, I get 8. If I double the 5, I get 10. Oh, my goodness. Now all I have to do is subtract 1 from them, and uh, that gets me where I need to go. So my recursive formula is um, a sub n minus 1 plus 2n minus 1. Um, and that's great. Why is this a pain, though? The reason this is a pain is... If I want to find the sixth term, the amount of the sixth term is the amount of the fifth term, because see, 6 minus 1 is 5, so we'll go 24, plus 2 times 6 minus 1, so 24 plus 11, so the amount of the sixth term is indeed 35. That's awesome. But what if I want to know the amount of the 50th term? 
Oh, so can you see why that's problematic? I'm going to have to find the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, all the way up to the 49th term. That way I have something to use to find that 50th term. That kind of stinks. So that's why we even bother with trying to find explicit formulas. The explicit formula, it, it, you find that um, almost the exact same way. Um, you, you're trying to find, the difference here is that you're trying to uh, find something in terms of n. It doesn't require the term before it. I can find the amount of the 50th term just by plugging 50 in for n, just by substituting 50 in for n. And so um, I'm going to look for a pattern, and I'm going to start with the same thing. One, two, three, four. My five terms are 0, 3, 8, 15, and 24. And so um, I'm thinking in my head we can do something similar to what we did with recursive. I'm trying to determine what I'm going to do. Instead of looking at their differences, I'm going to relate how can I get directly from n to the amount of n. Because I don't, I don't want to have to worry about the term prior to it. Well, I can get from 1 to 0 just by subtracting 1, but 2 minus 1 is not 3. So that doesn't work. Um, oh, here's something I notice. Look how close all of these are to perfect squares. You know, my perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. So look at that. If I add 1 to that, I get 1. If I add 1 to that, I get 4. If I add 1 to that, I get 9, 16, and 25. Now I have a bunch of perfect squares here, and that's awesome. And not only are there perfect squares, but they are the perfect squares of our n. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. I just found my explicit formula. If I square my index and subtract 1, it should give me the amount of that term. So let's try it out with one of these just to make sure. So the amount of the sixth term should be 6 squared minus 1. Well, 6 squared is 36, and 36 minus 1 is 35, and that's what we found over here. Great, so now I can use this newfound explicit formula that we wrote to find the amount of the 50th term. Pause it and do that, please. Now that you're back, hopefully you took 50 squared minus 1. And 50 squared is a pretty good size number it's 2500 and when you subtract 2500 and you or um, you subtract 1 from 2500 the amount of the 50th term in this sequence is 2499 all right so that's my video it went a little longer than i wanted to but it's the first day goodbye